Nick Wright, who's been on vacation uh, again. Brazil. Did he mix in Acapulco? Oh, and Madrid? This guy. <laughs> I so mean, I, look at him. Honestly, yeah. I've never seen uh, any. Look at the tan. How long were you off, uh -huh. by the way? I don't know, long enough that evidently Kyler Murray had three great seasons that I missed. You got him ahead of Dak Prescott. And, I mean, what are you talking about? The guy's smaller than your son and, and injured, and nobody likes him. Yeah, what are you doing there? I, the, I, can, I can ride with you on golf. I understand a lot of what you did. I'd have had Jalen ahead of uh, Stafford, but that's picking nits. But Kyler Murray should be, of those eight quarterbacks, the last one listed. He just has to be. He has every red flag, Colin. The best I can tell, Larry Fitzgerald had the choice of play with him or quit the sport and quit the sport. <laughs> they don't think he studies, and he's hurt all the time. I don't know. I, uh, the Kyler thing I disagree with. Otherwise, good list. All right. So oh, i, I got to start with this, and your pictures with your yeah. beautiful wife were amazing, and I'm very happy for you. So I said this. Thank everybody you. was selling their um, warrior stock, and I said, in my lifetime, uh, if you go back – even to the tough guy Pistons, a lot of intellectual basketball capital. Dumars became a GM, Isaiah GM, Lambeer a coach, Mahorn a sure. coach. I think the intellectual capital in the building, Bob Meyer, Steve Kerr, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, uh, Andrew Wiggins, I buy this team. I think when Steph's been gone, it's allowed them. DiVincenzo's playing. Jordan Poole step. I think their backcourt depth is insane. Um, sure. But why are they so awful on the road? And great at home. They're terrible on the road. Yeah, they're not a very good team, Colin. And while Bill Lambeer was a tough guy, he didn't punch his teammates. He saved that for Larry Bird and Michael Jordan. So I think I think you started off the season poorly. And Colin, and this is why at some point, congrats to the Warriors for winning that title last year. I did not see it coming. I did not expect it. And I deep down still think if Chris Middleton stays healthy, they don't win that title. But that's neither here nor there. That banner will fly forever. But, Colin, 20 games in, this team was 10 and 10. 40 games in, they were 20 and 20. 60 games in, they were 30 and 30. And they currently have more road victories than the Spurs and the Rockets and that is the list. Oh, Nick, but, but Steph's been out. They are 20 and 19 when Steph plays and 14 and 12 when he doesn't. No matter how you slice it, this is an average team that as great as Steph is, he can't, he can't save this team. So I know that you were buying up that warrior stock that those other people were selling. I sold most of mine, but I held a few shares. But I'll sell it to you right now, my <laughs> friend, because this team is drawing dead to win a title. They just they I think they they it was such an emotional relief and such an emotional investment to winning it last year that this year when it starts off poorly and they deal with injuries and the young guys don't come around the way they'd hoped, it's just too much of an ask, in my opinion. So it's interesting. I I covered Arvidas Sabonis in Portland for several years. Jokic reminds me a little of him. A big, durable body. Um, tremendous yeah. passer. You can move him away from the basket. Automatic near the basket. He's going to win another MVP. It bothers you, though. Now, the stats, the data, he's highly productive, uniquely gifted yeah. as a sort of center, point center. Sabonis sure. had the ability to literally run the offense through him behind the back passes. Why does it drive you nuts that he's going to win another MVP? Well, I just, I think there is, and I wonder if you agree with me on this, Colin. I think there is a new arrogance of the media that is polluting a lot of our sports coverage. And the reason I say that here is the entirety, it would seem, of NBA MVP voters, or at least the vast majority, are convinced they have this award right and all of history must have had it wrong. Because, they, oh, Nick, it's just a regular season award. What you've done in the postseason does not matter and how many you have won does not matter. Then why 
does no one ever win three straight? Then why does everyone in the history of this award who has gotten a third, much less three straight, had been to at least one, most usually two, and for everyone but two guys had won a championship, been to a finals or been to two finals, I should say, and for everyone but two guys won a championship. So what you're telling me is the voters in the past who decided, all right, Magic's won two in a row, we're not giving him a third in a row. Michael's won two in a row, we're not giving him a third in a row. Steph, Giannis, LeBron, those guys had it wrong, and you have it right. Well, Nick, he's the one seed with amazing numbers. Well, that can't matter, though, because those same voters last year told me he should win as the sixth seed. Right. The reason I care, Colin, is because... I think NBA MVP is one of the only awards we have left that has true historical relevance. You want to tell a story of the eras? Go look at the damn MVPs. In the 60s, Wilt and Russell won them all. Guess yeah. who the players were? Wilt and Russell. In the 70s, Kareem won six. In the 80s, Michael, Bird, and Magic yeah. won. Let me do the math quickly in my head. In the 80s, Michael only won one. So they won nine of them. And, and in the 90s, it's Jordan with, oh, Akeem. That was an important player. Yeah. Then we have Duncan. We have Shaq. We have LeBron. It tells the story of the league. Right. And in 60 years, folks are going to be like, oh, man, how many titles Jokic wins? Like, oh, none. Did he get unlucky? Nope. Nobody actually even expected him to win the title. <laughs> what about when they were the one seed? People, no, the, the, the same voters who are demanding, if you don't vote Jokic, you don't understand the sport, ask them who they got winning the West, much less the title. <laughs> and you know who they'll say? <laughs> Teams who have players who are better than Jokic, but they're not actually better than Jokic, but they play defense and then get a bucket better. But have you seen Jokic's VORP? He's a great player. And if he hadn't won the previous two, which he shouldn't have, he, I would be fine with him winning this one. But now he's going to win them all. And I'm just, I'm just asking this question. If he wins again this year, and then they lose in round two again, last year was actually round one, are we, he can win next year though, right? Because it's not about the playoffs. It's, right. it's about, he just get, let him win all the awards. Not that I'm passionate about it. It just bothers me, Colin. <laughs> we used to have standards in this country. Well, oh boy. Well, you know, uh, I think your argument, your historical argument is generally we give it to the guy who we feel like is the greatest player. And uh, we've gotten a little, um, I, I agree with you on this. I, I tend to be. I, th I think the regular season and the postseason, though, are two different seasons. They, it's officiated differently. Uh, home court. Yes, but it does. Hold on. But it, let me just ask this. That's true. But Giannis won two in a row. Right. And flamed out in the playoffs. And you know what they said? You, you can't win the next year. Yeah, that's true. Nash won two in a row yeah. and then had his best season. And they didn't make the finals. And so they didn't let him win the next year. That's true. W why are we changing? And what they are arguing is. Those voters got it wrong. Right. But with the Giannis thing, it's the same voters. <laughs> they just, I, I, don't, right. I don't understand it. Yeah. No. He still reminds me of Arvidas Sabonis a little bit. Okay, finally. Maybe not finally. Yeah. Um, I, there's a lot of things. I have very flawed, vulnerable friends, and that's why I love them. They're all a little off. Uh, I do have yeah. one thing, though, that is a non-starter. Can't be high maintenance. I'm busy. I'm married. I got kids. I got businesses. You can't be high maintenance. So I know if I ran the Packers, I'd be like, dude, I, I can't do it. I love you. <laughs> I, I can't deal with the constant nobody loves me. So I get Green Bay despite Aaron's talent. I, as I've said before as a GM, Baker Mayfield, by the way, undraftable to me. I, I tell, I'll take Kirk Cousins, less drama. What do you make? What would you do if you're Green Bay? I'd rather play love. I, I'm, I'd be done with it. I, the juice is no longer worth the squeeze. Not for the money and for the drama. And there was a point in time where it was. But now, now people, are, we are asking Aaron Rodgers, in a season where he will turn 40, to get better. It, it, the, at the level of player he was last year, he's not worth the contract and the headache. And why would we expect him to reverse the aging curve? Because Tom Brady did. Brady and LeBron, Colin, are going to have a long tail of making teams make bad decisions. Because teams are going to see their aging stars and say, well, 
Brady was had a whole nother chapter left, and LeBron had five more years left. Those guys are the outlier, not the rule. And so it, when you add to it that he is, and it is his right, and I understand it, but a, you know, a seven-month player instead of a 10-month player, the way the rest of the quarterbacks in this, the top quarterbacks in this league are, I'd move on. Now, I said they should have played love the final month of the season. Yeah. And everybody killed me for it. But now I bet they wish they had because then at least they would know if they turn it over to love. Are we screwed or not? Do we need to find a new quarterback? Now they're going to be flying blind, but they can't. He's not good enough anymore to allow to to have total control over the team. At least that's the way I see it. Okay. Now you are going to do this for a long time. I've been doing it for a long time. I am. We, we tend to bury people at the end of their careers. And my takeaway is if somebody's good and having fun and making good money, keep doing it. How is it going to land for you? If Aaron goes to the jets and Brady comes back and plays for the Niners, what do you make of that? Because well, I mean, I, it, it's going to happen. Oh, listen, I think that's you, – you say it's going to happen? I think Wait, it's – did I just hear it's going to happen? I really think it's it, It's 50-50. People I trust – Mike Silver told me two weeks ago, he goes, it's just too obvious. Purdy's not going to be ready till Thanksgiving off the surgery. It's too good of a roster to this, just say, okay. we're going to put Trey Lanton across our fingers. It's too good of a roster. All right, well, l- listen, I'm not writing off Trey Lance. However, before Brady retired – I assumed that was definitely where he was going, Miami or San Francisco. You need a ready-made roster. San Francisco is as ready-made as it gets. It makes all the sense in the world. And I, Colin, I'll tell you this much. I actually, I've come around on this. I'd be fine with it because my guy, Patrick Mahomes, oh, okay. is going to win all, the, get all the records, win all the Super Bowls, have all these things. However, as it stands, mm. there is one box he will never be able to check. Beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. But if Tom Brady comes back to San Francisco, oh, oh we know how that game would go. Now all of a sudden <laughs> we get Mahomes Brady in a championship with Mahomes complete. You know, that would w- probably be for Mahomes' attempt to go 20-0. and 0. Forget back-to-back. I mean, pretend, you know, I, I, I don't know if you've looked up the, down the Chiefs' depth chart, but it, I, don't find, I don't see a lot of holes and I don't see a lot of losses on the upcoming schedule. So how great would that be? How great would that be? Tom Brady goes back to San Francisco. The, Mahomes has three career playoff losses. Two of them are to that guy. And if he gets him to complete a second straight Super Bowl, maybe an undefeated season, oh, my goodness gracious. So, yeah. I hope Brady comes back. I hope he comes back to the NFC, and Mahomes will see him at the top of the mountain. All right. I wanted to see how that would land for you. Well, he's tanned. I'm fine with it. Yeah. How at Brazil it was nice. I've never gone there. It was nice. Well, let, I it was, it was the most like as, as far as landscape, the most beautiful place I've ever been. Uh, it was it was absolutely amazing. I appreciate that. The listeners don't care about that, so we yeah. can move on. You also look quite. Listen, Colin. See, let me just tell America some real quick. Colin does. Colin, uh, we all get time off and go on vacation. Yeah. And some of us go sunny places, and Colin then's like, "Oh, look at these tan people." Meanwhile, pretending he's just been grinding. <laughs> he goes to his ski chalet, where yeah, he doesn't get tan because he's wearing goggles, but he sure as hell seems to be having a good time and acts like we're living the good life. Give me a break. (laughs) You're breaking up. I can't hear you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.